basically, I don't know what I do, I'll play a song, come out of it, introduce the next one, and play it. And that's pretty much what we do in here. <laughs> so I'm up at 6 Tuesday mornings, here for 8. I have class until about 5 o'clock. I have a one-hour break at noon. And then, yeah, and then I take the train home. I'm supposed to start work at 6, but because of school, I can get there about 7 or 8. So if I have time, I can have like a half-hour nap, which I usually do. And then, yeah, I'm at work till about 1 or 2. And then I'm up at 6 again on Wednesday morning. It's Getting out of bed is always the hardest part. And then I know, I'm like, well, I'm going to, to school to have fun. Like, Wednesdays are our radio shows. So I'm either part of that or I'm listening to it. So it's like, like, there could be a lot worse things getting out of bed for right now. I mean, I could be going to work 12 hours, you know, fixing toilets like I used to. So one, once I get out of bed, everything starts to, it's all downhill from there. Uh, where do you work? I work at a place called Rally Point. It's a volleyball complex in the southeast. But they have a bar and restaurant. So Monday to Thursday nights it's open for because it's co-ed league play. So I, I bartend and serve there. Um, well, I make ten bucks an hour on wage, which is pretty high for serving. And then I make in tips. I, I usually make about a hundred dollars a night for about four and a half five hours of work, and it, it's not a very hard job. So it's I do pretty well, all things considered. So work is actually surprisingly de-stressing. Parking, how, how much do you pay for parking in, say, an average week or an average month, depending on how long you um, Well, like, I park in the parkade where, it, the, the Jubilee parkade, so it's just $8 a day. So, I don't know, it could be, I'd probably say average 70 to $80 a month. Maybe it's probably a bit more, more now, and it was less at the beginning of the year when I'm still all, you know, high on life and not as tired, but... Now I definitely drive a lot more, so it's probably closer to like $100 a month. In this program, it's more like a first job than school, so I just I, I don't really want to, I guess, handicap myself for the future by screwing up school. So I probably overstress about school, actually. Anthem 103, that was the abusive dad from Friday Night Lights, otherwise known as Tim McGraw with Red Ragtop. It is 12.28, I'm Teddy Emmett. Coming up, we have Mr. Nicole Kidman, otherwise known as Keith Urban, which is something I hope we have here in Calgary this year. This is Long Hot Summer on Anthem 103. Issues. Common to all students at SAIT. Teddy is only one example of the many students in RTBN who have life to deal with as a full-time student. Dr. Steve Olson, the academic chair of the radio program, describes his view on the students in the radio program and the RTBN program itself. Generally speaking, uh, the, the students who are coming into media programs, in particular the type of programs in a television radio uh, type area, frequently those students uh, we sort of look at them as a bit of a marginalized student. Okay, there are people that have gone through the K to 12 system, not necessarily with the best grades, always sort of finding themselves in a situation where they don't just quite fit in as well as other students. They have friends who tolerate them, but not necessarily really get them. They have support from parents, but only the support that, that says, I'm glad you're in school. I'm not exactly sure what you're doing in school, but glad you're in school. And, and so that is the student that comes in here, uh, not necessarily with, with the greatest grades, you know, not necessarily with the best educational experience leading up to post-secondary. That student is facing challenges the day they get here. And then suddenly they discover that they're in a group that's just like them. We find friendships that develop in the first three to four weeks that are as tight and close as people that they've known their entire lives. We, we find they suddenly get engaged in the educational process and we start to see them embrace the fact that they're not stupid. They, they just didn't find something that inspired them. And so a lot of times all of these other problems have a tendency of going away because this is a student that is suddenly inspired. They're doing well. They're suddenly getting the grades that they should have been getting all along. They're finding a passion. They're doing something that that they would have done as a hobby, they would have volunteered to do this, and they're finding that it's leading them to a career where they could actually get paid for this. 
Well, that's a pretty exciting time. And so when you take a look at a lot of the other issues that go on, a lot of times we can overlook those or oversee them or overcome them because we're an engaged student in an area that we love, that we're passionate about, that's going to take us places where we can see some dreams come true. I came into it knowing pretty much nothing, thinking that radio was just talking into a microphone on air, but I mean the production side of it, the writing side of it, and I've already met pretty much some of the best friends I have. And I've only been in this program for a couple months, so it's probably not one thing that's my favorite. It's just everything in general. And you just have to make sure, I mean, it, it is a lot of fun, and it, it's not hard work. It's a lot of work, but it's not hard work if you just put some passion into it. And it's not business school. You can't, you know, get C's and still go get a good job. I mean, what you do here sets you up for the rest of your life. But I guess more or less just have fun with it because it is a lot of fun.